Right, so let's quickly look at debtors control adjustments. So with the debtors control adjustments, we're trying to paint the true picture of the debtors control balance. In other words, the true picture of how much money is actually owed to the entity and how much money the entity will actually be able to recover from the debtors that owe their money. So there's two adjustments that we're going to look at. Number one is bad debts, which we've had a look at briefly already. And the second one is provision for bad debts. Maybe just quickly, the difference between the two. Bad debts are those debts that um, we know for sure that they are bad. We've received the notice that the debtor has been declared insolvent and we know we will not be able to recover the money from that debtor. So there's a, an element of certainty there. So those are, uh, we can say, certainly bad. Okay, we're certainly not going to recover. Certainly bad, not going to recover. When I say recover, that means we're not going to be able to collect the money from the debtor. Provision for bad debts is more of an estimate. It's an estimate of the amounts that we're not going to recover. So this one is there's a more certainty with regard to the amount that is bad. And the provision for bad debts is an estimate of the irrecoverable amounts or the bad amounts. Okay, so that's basically the difference. Bad debts, certainly bad. Provision for bad debts, it's an estimate. In the previous video, we saw that bad debts is an expense because it is basically an asset that has been lost, the asset being debtor's control. So it's just a transaction or the debit and credit again. If we have to write off a debtor's debt as bad, the bad debts, the expense, is going to increase and that is therefore going to be a debit. The debtor's control is an asset that belongs to the entity but because the asset is decreasing because we're losing some money that the debtor owed us because he's been declared insolvent an asset that decreases is going to be a credit. So debit, bad debts, I've got a credit, debtor's control. So let's quickly look at an example of accounting for bad debts as well as provision for bad debts. So we're given the following information for Shop Limited, which has got a year end on the 31st of December 2013. Two important pieces of information here. You've got debtors control with a balance of 26,000 Rand and provision for bad debts 130 Rand. So just something important to understand with regards to these two accounts, we will see debtors control has got a debit balance of 26,000 Rand and provision for bad debts has got a credit balance of 130 Rand. So it's these two accounts together that is going to represent what our debtors owe to the entity and what we expect to recover from the debtors. So if I have to represent this with T accounts, it will look something like this. All right, so I've got the debtor's control account, which is an asset. And because it's an asset, it's going to increase on the debit side and decrease on the credit side. And then I've got my provision for bad debts account, which is a negative asset. And what this means is it is going to decrease my asset. So it's going to be exactly the opposite of my asset. It's going to increase on the credit side and decrease on the debit side. So from the information, we can see that debtors is 26,000 Rand. So we can record that on the debit side of debtors control. 20. So let's just use a different color.
26,000 Rand and my provision for bad debts has got a balance of there we go we can see it's got a balance of 130 Rand so let's record that 130 Rand now to understand what the true picture for my debtors are we need to look at these two accounts collectively so what that means is we basically need to look at them together we need to combine them and actually see them as as one account that's just been divided into two so that means i've got a a, a debit on debtors of 26,000 and a credit on debtors of 130 which effectively is going to give me a debit balance of 26,000 minus 130 which is 25,870 and that is a debit to debtors control which is what will be displayed in the financial statements next to trade and other receivables so these two accounts together is going to give me the actual true picture of the debtors balance back to our example and we look at the additional information point number one the account of mr s gonzalez 2600 rand has to be written off as bad so how do we record that again we remember that a part of the asset is lost so the asset is going to go down and my expense is going to in to increase so my asset, the debtor's control, is going to go down by 2,600 Rand. And my expense, the bad debts, is going to increase by 2,600 Rand. The details in the debtor's control account is going to be bad debts. And the details in the bad debts account is going to be debtor's control. That is the general ledger. And then if we move on to the general journal, writing of the bad debts, we can see that we have debited the bad debts account. That's the one that has the debit entry recorded. Bad debts has been debited with 2,600 Rand. And my debtors control, the asset has decreased because we've lost a part of the asset. Debtors control is going to be credited. There we go. That was the first transaction. Right, and if we have to then record this in the post adjustment trial balance, we can see that we've got uh, debtors control, provision for bad debts, etc. And the only amount that we can fill in at this stage is the 2600. But let's leave it for now until we're finished with transaction number two, which says provision for bad debts is estimated at 5% of the debtor's book. So you'll remember that we started off with a debtor's balance of 2000, 26,000 Rand. There's my 26,000 Rand. And then we had this 2,600 Rand that we wrote off. And now information number two says that the provision for bad debts is estimated at 5% of the total debtor's book. So I need to calculate 5% of the total debtor's book. The question is, what is the total debtor's book? The total debtor's book is what is represented on my debtor's control T account. So that's going to be the 26,000 on the debit side minus the 2,600 Rand on the credit side. So if we calculate, I can take 26,000 Rand minus 2,600 Rand and that is going to give me 23,400. So that is my total debtor's book. Now that I've got the total debtor's book, I need to calculate 5% of the total debtor's book. So back to my calculator, I can say times five divided by 100, and that is going to be 1170. Now what is this figure that we've calculated? That is the amount that the provision for bad debts should be. It should be 1170. We know that the balance is currently, from our pre-adjustment trial balance, the current picture, 
my provision for bad is 130. All right, and the balance should be from the additional information 1170. And this should be a credit balance. So the question is, how am I going to get from 130 to this calculated 1170? And I'm obviously going to have to increase the 130 with the difference. So the difference is going to be 1170 minus the 130. And that is going to give me 1040, which I need to record on the credit side of provision for bad debts account. All right. That's the one leg. The other leg of this transaction is going to be recorded on the provision for bad debts adjustment account. So we've already got the credit to provision for bad debts, which is going to decrease. Remember, these two accounts together represent the true picture of the debtors. So I've already got the credit on the debtors accounts. And now I need to process the debit on the provision for bad debts adjustment account. And I'll simply fill in my contra entries. Provision for bad debts. And here I'm going to fill in provision for bad debts adjustment. Good. Just to quickly explain to you and to recap what we've done here. If we go to our whiteboard and we look at this, we can see that we started off with our provision for bad debts account. Provision for bad debts. And the balance currently was a hundred and thirty Rand credit. Then we calculated what the balance should be. And we saw that the balance should be Well, the information said 5% of the debtor's book, which was 5 over 100 multiplied by the 26,000 Rand opening balance that we had. Just in case you forget, there is my 26,000 Rand opening balance and minus the 2,600 that we had to write off. So it was a 26,000 minus the 2,600. Don't forget to minus this bad debts. All right. And that gave us a new total or the balance that the provision should have been at 1170. Good. So the balance is 130. It should be 1170. So the difference is going to be my adjustment reflect the true picture of the debtors and that is simply going to be the difference 1170 minus the 130 that gave me 1040 now I wanted to go from this current picture here to the true picture here so uh, I wanted to go from 130 credit to a 1170 credit so I had to increase the current picture with another 1040 so that is exactly what we did here the current picture was 130 we wanted this side to be 1170 so we had to process another 1040 on the credit side of the provision for bad debts account now these two accounts look very similar this one says provision for bad debts but this one here at the top is a balance sheet account in other words it's always going to have a balance and it's going to be carried forward every year that's why we have an opening balance here on provision for bad debts of 130. And the second account that we have here in red is the expense account in this case it's an expense it could also be an income if the adjustment went the other way But here, since we have increased our estimate of debtors that we are losing, so if we are losing an asset, that needs to be an expense. 
That's why in this case, we've got an expense, which as you can see here, increases on the debit side and decreases on the credit side. So quickly, my journal entry for the provision for bad debts, I'm going to debit the expense account because if I can show you this, I'm going to, my expense is increasing, right? And my asset is decreasing. The way that I'm going to decrease my asset is not directly against the asset as with the bad debts, but I'm going to use the intermediate account, which is the negative asset, right? So my asset debtors is still decreasing, but this time via the negative asset. And an expense that increases is going to be a debit, a negative asset that increases is going to be a credit. Right, why is that? An asset that increases is a debit, so a negative asset is going to be the opposite of an asset that increases. So if we go back to our general ledger, we can see here that both the bad debts adjustment decreased my assets as well as the provision for bad debts adjustment. So both the adjustment where we had certainty about the amount of debtors that were bad as well as the adjustment where we had to estimate the amount of debtors that we're not going to recover. So both of them, as you can see, here, are effectively decreasing my debtors. We're just recording them on different accounts. Good. So let's record the journal entry for the provision for bad debts adjustment. I'm going to debit provision for bad debts adjustment with the 1040 Rand. That's what we had here. That was the entry we had. And I'm going to credit the negative asset provision for bad debts, okay, which is the balance sheet account with the 1040. Fantastic. Right, now that we've done that, we can show the picture on our post adjustment trial balance, which is the true picture of what should have actually happened on the 31st of December. So my debtors control should actually have been 26,000 Rand minus the 2,600 Rand. So that is going to be, let's just record that, 26,000 minus 2,600, that is 23,400. And my provision for bad debts it was 130, but we saw that it should have been 1170. To get it to 1170, we had to process that adjustment. So the true picture is 1170. Remember, this is just the adjustment. The 1040 is only the adjustment. And then my bad debts, we saw that that was 2,600. This is the amount written off. That's going to be an expense. My provision for bad debts adjustment, also an expense because that's also an estimate of the debtors or the assets that we are losing. And in this example, it was 1040. That is the adjustment. And lastly, bad debts recovered. We did not recover any bad debts, so we can just leave that blank. Required number four asks us to calculate the amount that will be disclosed under trade and other receivables in the financial statements. Now, this amount is going to be my debtors control balance minus my provision for bad debts balance. So my debtors control balance, as we can see from the post adjustment trial balance, is 23400. So I can put that in 23400 minus the provision for bad debts balance, which is 1170. So minus 1170, and that's going to give me 22230. And I can click submit, and that should be correct.